Welcome to worship at Greenland Hills United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're worshiping here with us. My name is Carrie, and I'm blessed to be the pastor here at Greenland Hills. Uh, we invite you to share this post if you're watching on Facebook. It's the new way to invite someone to church. And if you or anyone that you know is in need of support, please reach out. My email is ksmith at greenlandhills.org. Next Sunday, May the 2nd, we invite you to come worship in the sanctuary at 9 or 11 a.m. We are asking you to register if you're coming uh, in May so that we can be prepared for you. Face masks are required, and we will have a nursery available from 9 a.m. to noon with the kids playing on the playground as much as possible. The link to register uh, is in the description for today's worship. We are planning to live stream worship at 9 a.m. so you can still access worship online as well. We're also going to have Sunday school for the children. Uh, there's going to be two classes, um, K to third grade and fourth to sixth grade, and they're going to meet outside. So um, we invite your kids to come as well. If you have any questions about that, reach out to Kristen Mallory. Today is also the last day to order flowers from our youth for upcoming mission trips. They'll be available for pickup on May the 2nd. Thank you to Leanne Hicks for the altar flowers this morning. We may be scattered and worshiping in our homes this morning, but the church is still being the church. May we join our voices in song as we center ourselves by singing together. together as we call ourselves to worship. Jesus loves me, this I know. Wait, do I know that? I have questions and I have doubts. For the Bible tells me so. Wait, do I believe in what this ancient book has to say? I have so many questions and so many doubts. God invites you to bring your deepest questions and doubts. But if you see God working in the world, then you are challenged to believe. God invites you to bring your deepest questions and doubts. Flowers fade and grass withers, but God always stands with us. In the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise. Butterflies will soon be free. In the cold of snow and winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God in our end is our beginning in our time infinity in our doubt there is believing in our life eternity in our death a resurrection at the last of victory unrevealed until 
something God alone can see. Now join me this morning in our litany. God, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though I am poor, today I believe. God, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though I am weak, today I believe. God, you have always given peace for the coming day, and though I am of anxious heart, today I believe. God, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now, tried as I am, today I believe. God, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. God, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. God, you have always spoken when time was ripe, and though you are silent now, today I believe. or your living room or your kitchen having breakfast or maybe you're still in bed that's okay we are just glad to be with you here this morning now I was thinking 
about something because my children have started reading this book and when I was younger I used to grow up reading the Guinness Book of World Records all the time. It was really little print in a big book and I thought it was so fascinating. And one summer, I actually got to meet at tennis camp one of the people that was in the book for the most rallies back and forth, like the longest rally. And I just thought that was the coolest ever. And my kiddos, they love this book called Ripley's Believe It or Not, and there's all these crazy stories of things that seem really doubtful, but they say that they're true. So one of them is a man named James Cook had a chicken who laid a perfectly square egg. I don't know. I mean, that just seems kind of crazy. Also, there's a girl in California who's 15 years old, and guess how many hula hoops she was able to swing on her body at the same time? Go ahead, guess. Close. 68 hula hoops. That just seems like that would just be so tall. How is that even possible? So the stories in this book are pretty interesting, but they also make me think, hmm, did that really happen? And the Bible is kind of like that. I mean, the Bible is full of stories about faith and about doubt. But also, there's a lot of stories in the Bible that are sometimes just, hmm, did that really happen? I mean, how could Jesus have really walked on water? And how could the sea have really parted? And Jonah and the whale, I mean, there's so many stories that are amazing, but you just might wonder. And I love that it's okay to wonder. It's okay to question. It's okay to doubt. One of the more famous stories in the Bible about doubt is about Doubting Thomas. You may have heard that name. And Doubting Thomas wasn't there when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. And then he heard about it, and he didn't believe it. He was not having any of it. He said, I don't think that happened. I'd have to see the holes in Jesus' hands where the nails were. Sure enough, Jesus then appeared to Thomas and showed him his hands. And then the Bible says, basically, blessed are those who have not seen but believe. And that part of the Bible and that story is talking about how important faith is. But there are so many other parts that say it's okay to question, it's okay to doubt, it's okay to wonder. And God wants us to bring those doubts and those questions to God. And we actually talked about this a lot at youth last weekend. We talked about how when we do question and when we do bring our doubts and feelings to God, that's when our faith actually can get bigger and it can become even stronger. And so I love that we have a God who will sit with us in the doubt and in the questions and lets us know that it's okay. There's a song, it's actually one of my favorite songs from high school, and I'm going to read you one of the verses, but I'm not going to sing it to you, okay? I just, I won't this time. It says, have you ever stood in the family with the Lord there in your midst, seen the face of Christ in your brother? Then I say, you've seen Jesus, my Lord. And then the chorus says, have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes, he'll show it to you. I know that we may not be able to see Jesus, quotation, see Jesus, but I love this song because when it talks about, have you ever stood in the family and seeing the face of Christ in your brother, I think about how every time I come to this place, Greenland Hills, I see the face of Jesus on the people here. And so even though we might not get to physically see Jesus, 
we do get to see Jesus so much through the people around us. And that gives me so much comfort just to know that we have a God who says, bring me your questions, bring me your doubts, but also I'm going to show up to you in all the people around you, and I'm going to show up to you in so many different ways that you can see me. So let's think about that this week. It's a lot to just think about when it comes to faith and doubt and what seeing Jesus looks like, but I challenge you to think about that for a couple minutes a day. Let's go ahead and will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us when we have questions. And thank you that we get to see you, Jesus, in so many people around us. Amen. Thank you for being with me. Our scripture reading today comes from John 10, verses 22 through 32. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all these, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? Would you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you so much for your gifts of mercy, of love, and of generosity. And we ask that you just bless this message and the people that will hear it and receive it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my husband and I were recently watching one of the many, many, many dramas on Netflix, and this particular one was a crime drama. And it was about a teenage girl who had been found dead in the woods of Luxembourg, of all places. And through the closed captioning translation, we tried to figure out who had killed this girl. First, the show led us to believe it was the stepfather. Nope, what not him. Next, the show intimated it was drug-related. It was not. Was it the mother? No. Was it the father? No. Was it her classmates? Not them either. So for too many episodes, Mike and I, we fell into the rabbit hole of this show. And at the last scene, at the last episode, we found out it was dun-dun-dun. The twin sister, of course, because every crime drama show has a twin sister that you don't know about who killed their other sister. <sighs> we thought we had it figured out. We rode this roller coaster of doubt and indecision, and then we finally found out. And after it was all over, we commented to one another that Netflix could have saved us several hours of our time and just told us who did it, but they did not. And that's the whole point of them putting on so many shows just like that. And in the real life drama of John 10, verses 22, they commenced with some Jewish people gathered around Jesus as he was walking in the temple. And they went up to him and they said, are you the Messiah or not? The suspense is killing us. And Jesus gave them a straight answer. He said, I have told you, and you have not believed. I do my Father's work, 
and you see it for yourselves, yet you doubt. Let me explain to you that there's nothing inherently wrong with doubt. We all doubt. We doubt our parenting abilities if you have children. We doubt our faith in God. We doubt we could pass a test. It's a natural response of human beings. However, many of us like to insert ourselves as the wise sheep in that story that Jesus t uh, told the, the uh, Jewish people. We fluff up our curly locks, and we puff out our chest. Well, Jesus explains to the crowd how his sheep, that's us, hear his voice and how Jesus recognizes his sheep, that's me. Would we have known if Jesus was the Messiah if we were there at the temple that day. Sure, we could read the account and insert ourselves as the sheep, but we know the entire story. But what if we had not and didn't know the outcome? You see, I'm not convinced we could be overtly critical of the Jewish people that day in this scenario, simply because they are no different from you and me. If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. How many times have we said to someone, just tell me the truth. I just want straight answers. And sometimes what we're really saying in those instances is, I just don't want to be in doubt anymore. It's like we're holding our breath because there's just this little whiff of misgiving in the air. Now Jesus' cousin, John, asked a similar question regarding the identity of the Messiah in Matthew 11, verses 2 through 6. It goes like this, when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come? Or do we wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. So John gets the message. He's sitting in a crude prison awaiting his sentencing for speaking the truth. And we don't know whether he was alone or with others, and it doesn't matter. But we do know that doubt began to creep in his mind. And through all those years that John had of hopeful anticipation of a savior and the true identity of the Messiah, he didn't know on that day. Was Jesus the one or should he look for another? And rather say, yes, John, I am the one. Jesus commanded John's disciples to report all of the miracles happening at the hands of Jesus. Tell John what I am doing, said Jesus. He will then have an answer to his question. I was thinking about tsunamis and how tsunamis and doubt have something in common. So listen to this definition of a tsunami. Tsunamis are giant waves caused by earthquakes or volcanic eruptions under the sea. Out of the depths of the ocean, tsunami waves do not dramatically increase in height, but as the waves travel inland, they build up to higher and higher heights as the depths of the oceans decrease. The speed of the tsunami waves depend on ocean depth rather than distance from the wave source. And tsunami waves may travel as fast as jet planes over deep waters, only slowing down when they reach the shallow waters. And I thought, that's how doubt acts sometimes. A small question begins to form in our minds, and it kind of rumbles underneath. Maybe it's something like, should I quit my job? Should I keep my job? What school do my kids need to attend? Should I break up with my current relationship or should I stay? And the undercurrent of doubt begins to build. And we begin to stew and ponder and pace and fret. And the waves of doubt become higher and higher. And pretty soon that doubt is a hundred foot wave in our minds before we know it. And we are beside ourselves. God, tell me what to do. 
and the God who, who welcomes our doubt with open arms says, I have told you, but you do not believe. Or maybe God says, look around and see what I am doing. The lame walk, the blind have sight. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Be still and know that I am God. There is safety in a multitude of counselors. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. If they fall, one will lift the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Trusting in God in God's words with our doubts is kind of like bungee jumping off the Royal Gorge Bridge, if you've ever been there in Colorado, which by the way is 955 feet down to the below of the river of the Arkansas River. And those things I just quoted were scriptures. And that's what God has given us. But living with perpetual doubt and anxiety could feel like John, like you're living in a prison cell or you're being awash in the waves of a tsunami. But when you allow God to walk with you, perhaps you could begin to release your grip on those doubts and hand them over to God. I read a suggestion where one could write their doubts down on a piece of paper and lay them at the front of the altar at church and leave them there. And since we're not meeting in person this week, perhaps some of you who are ex experiencing doubt, you could do this. You could write them, put them in a bowl. You could put them in a jar. You could get out a baggie and seal them up and hide them and never look at them again. And maybe that's a way, uh, way you could release your doubts to God. But here is the hard part of that. You have to leave them there and trust that Jesus has taken their, your doubts for you. Jesus can handle your doubts, your little sized doubts, your Thomas sized doubts. Remember what Thomas said, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And Jesus said, okay, See and feel and believe. And to all of us, Jesus is saying, bring your doubts to me and know that I will take care of you. Now finally, let me share with you a little bit of doubt that I have had over this past year. This will be the last time that I preach technically as an intern because I came in August of 2020. And here is how I began my internship. I began with a bang. After a sleepless night of doubt, I got up, I got in my car, I drove to the church, I used my key to open the door, I sat down and I looked around and I noticed that nobody was here. There were no cars in the parking lot and I thought, hmm. And uh, then I caught, um, my eye caught a sign that said, 9 a.m., Tuesday through Friday. And it was Monday. So I packed myself up and I took my tsunami-sized doubts and I went home. And I came back the next day. But I've been around enough to know that experience has taught me to believe that God will take care of me and God has taken care of me during this internship. From the very wise and guiding hand of Pastor Carrie Smith to Trish, the administrative assistant who has answered all my weird questions, to Kristen Mallory who has been so kind to me, and for all the weeks that we've been taping here, I have just been in awe over the musical talents of Robert and Christy. And let me say, it has been a privilege to be an intern here at Greenland Hills this year. Um, 
Even when I had doubts, I had this fantastic lay teaching committee headed by Sharon Bradley with all the members from Howard and Suzette and Sean and Kate and Kathy, and they were so kind and merciful to me. And as I end my internship next month, I say thank you for allowing me and all my doubts and sitting here on a Monday morning when the church wasn't even open to come and be a part of your journey. And let me just finish by saying this. Doubts will come and go. But God is eternal. And he never changes. And everybody said, Amen. We're a family of faith that believes that generosity is one of the most powerful actions that we can take to unite and serve and make an impact in our world. So you're invited to give online or to mail in your offering to support this church and its ministry. It's been so wonderful uh, to worship outside. And I give thanks for last week when we were able to say goodbye and pray for the Stroescu family as they moved to the Austin area. Uh, Michelle was able or told a story about about moving here from Nashville in the late 90s. She said that she was just calling churches, just sort of interviewing them over the phone. And she called Greenland Hills and Nancy Woolbright, our administrative assistant at the time, um, said that Greenland Hills was a great place that welcomed everybody. And Michelle said, she said, everybody? And Nancy said, everybody. So thank you for the gifts that you bring and that you give that allow this place to be a safe space for all people. Uh, will you join with me as we pray to God together? Gracious God, thank you for reminding us that generosity is not something that you want from us, but something that you want for us. We ask your blessings on these gifts. Use these gifts to help others as you have helped us. Amen.
you join with me as we pray to God together? Almighty God, it's a confusing time and a confusing world. We wonder where science and faith meet. We question authority and like to pick and choose what we believe according to what best fits us. We pray that in the moments when we are overwhelmed with doubts and questions, that you will help us catch our breath. Help us catch our breath and find our faith. Help us so to believe even where we have not yet seen. We pray this in the all-powerful name of Jesus. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, I invite us to join in the Lord's Prayer together using the words that are closest to your heart. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite us now to join our voices as we sing, We Walk by Faith. Would you join me in the benediction? How precious it is to be known, to have our minds and hearts open to new life. How precious it is to be held in a circle of prayer, to feel joy and laughter erupt and have our doubts eased. How precious to have our tears gathered into pearls and to our feet placed on the path of peace. May the risen Christ be among us again and send us forth in joy. Amen. Mm -hmm. 